Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, but also a few other things as well happening around digital assets as well as crypto itself so with all of that in mind let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here so we do see from roll xrp's quote and coin uh telegraphs article and this is u.s senator elizabeth warren says crypto will ruin economy you seriously can't make this stuff up. I mean, like these people, I don't know where, where where they're at. I don't know if they're living under a rock or something. But these are the types of people that will continue to say, uh, you know, this technology sucks. And then all of a sudden, the, the technology is everywhere. Everyone is utilizing it. I mean, it's crazy that they are blaming like the entire crypto economy uh, for FTX's collapse. I mean, this was a centralized, you know, Ponzi scheme essentially that a lot of people including myself believe was orchestrated by government entities just to push strict regulations to control this sector so that they could utilize this sector for their CBDC issuance. There's a lot of issues arising from this and it's concerning. We do see FTX's collapse should be a wake up call. SEC Gov, the Justice Department, the US Treasury should use their expansive authority to crack down on the crypto fraud. No. No, they shouldn't. The SEC Gov first off should be shut down. They are a garbage agency. They have done absolutely nothing for the space that is beneficial at all. They have not protected me. They have not protected you. They have not protected anyone in this scene. If anything, they have hurt us even more. And uh, yeah, I think that this post here from Steve is perfect. We do see centralized exchanges for crypto are a far cry from crypto. Uh, the technology uh, or sorry, from crypto, the technology, know the difference um, and only regulate the centralized exchanges. The risk is the centralized exchanges, not the crypto and not the centralized exchanges slash finance. Crypto did not fail. SBF failed. SE, SEC uh, failed as well. And I completely agree on that. And then we do see from CZ, some including me say this will set the industry back a few years. But thinking about it, this is natural. There will be failures with progress happen in regulated traditional finance in 2008. After 70 plus years of development, the industry will recover quickly and be become stronger. I agree with that. Honestly, I would argue that going forward, crypto is going to become a vital, it's going to be a vital uh, technology in not only our financial system, but in everyday life. Don't believe me? Well, here you guys have Rosie Rios. Uh, listen to what she's saying about crypto technology, including, of course, uh, with what Ripple is doing with XRP. I'm Rosie Rios, former Treasurer of the United States and current board member of Ripple. What I like to talk about is really kind of this intersection between government and innovation. Certainly coming from the Bay Area, born and raised in Silicon Valley, I've seen a lot of change over time. And what I love is the conversation is really starting to happen in a constructive way where I think we as a region, we as a country, and perhaps we as a globe could really think about the future of fintech and who the stakeholders are and how we can make this effective for everyone. So when you think about growth, it's not just kind of GDP growth, which of course is a big part of the economy, but it's also where new growth comes from. And that usually comes from certainly lately in technology and innovation. So I think the benefit of why business and government should be working together is again, providing that level of certainty for further expansion, further growth, and certainly more jobs for the economy. So blockchain is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And so it's not just how to facilitate commerce. There are other applications, uh, whether it's NFTs, whether it's, you know, selling real estate, whether it's, you know, any type of financial ledger that can be recorded uh, for posterity's sake. This is here to stay. And it's, it's important and incumbent upon the government at every level, whether it's local, whether it's state, whether it's national, to really give some thought as to how those applications are going to benefit them and benefit everyone. But I think what's most important is what are those guardrails? What are those tracks that we can lay down in order to move forward in a way that really blazes the trail for future growth and future opportunities that we perhaps we don't even know are there yet? And I love to hear talk so highly around ledger technology. DLT 
is going to be a crucial technology in the innovation and also the disruption of a lot of these major sectors and uh, industries that we do you know talk about on a daily basis I love to hear her talk about real estate as well real estate is going to be a huge area of opportunity um, and I also love to see ripple getting in on that space we actually do see over here uh, so we do see from ripple they posted this on the 22nd uh, they're saying functional nfts have the potential to transform industries like real estate by solving challenges with efficiency and transparency of ownership uh, remember what I to told you guys about how large the real estate market is. It's $326 trillion globally with 90% of it being, uh, you know, just retail uh, customers. So when we look at how large of an opportunity this actually is, um, you know, crypto could ultimately push the value of real estate to astronomical heights. I mean, I'm not going to say that real estate could be a 500 to 1 quadrillion dollar uh, market, but if you think about it, fractionalization, fractional ownership in real estate would bring a lot more value and a lot more volume to the real estate market. How does fractionalized you know, ownership work? Well, you have tokenization. You tokenize specific percentages and ownership value of that real estate uh, property, and you allow individuals to invest a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, and you could put a minimum on it too. Say for so you have a, we'll just say a million dollar property, right? And you want to have that rent it out, or I should say not rent it out, but you want it to be owned by 10 people, right? You have the shares out at 10% each, so $100,000 per investor, and you have 10 people invest in that property. There you guys have it. Fractionalized ownership. This is how disruptive tokenization could be for this $320 trillion market. And we do see over here, utility-based NFTs solving real-world problems in real estate. And uh, they bring up a few examples of, you know, what they are doing with NFTs. Uh, they have talked about the innovation that is happening behind them. They talk about, you know, blockchain art, season tickets, uh, carbon credits, and more real estate NFTs are gaining traction because they solve real-world challenges like process efficiency and transparency of ownership confirmation. Yeah, there's a lot of issues in the real estate market. In fact, it's, it's actually a very illiquid um, asset class. So tokenizing it and, uh, you know, bringing in a lot more money and things like that allow it to be a lot more liquid. It's a very, very innovative um, area to focus on, especially around crypto, because I do think that crypto will be vital for it. And um, yeah, we even do see down here, you know, streamlining property transactions using NFT selling a home traditionally is a long, cumbersome and also expensive process. From the initial listing of the home to the final close, offline uh, real estate transactions can take weeks or months. Soliciting and negotiating uh, offers, confirming title and ownership and also completing the required uh, uh, contracts and paperwork will also add extra time and cost. So tokenizing is going to save you not only a ton of money, but it is also going to streamline the entire process. You're going to see a lot of uh, uh, big changes happening here. And I think that ultimately at first people will be hesitant to this technology, but then all at once we will see it ha be a, a major standard within real estate. And I think that that's very exciting. And we already do see Ripple partnering with a lot of names. We talked about the proper home uh, partnership. I think that that was a great area for them. It, it tapped right into this industry. And I think that they will continue to expand. And uh, you got to remember, like a lot of people talk about the value of XRP just in cross-border payments and Nostro Vostro accounts. Uh, what if they take over Swift's market cap? Like, Think about how much more opportunity there is here uh, around like the XRP ledger, right? We focus on the XRP ledger quite a bit. I mean, look at all of the power behind this thing. You have payment channels, you have tokens, multi-sign and cross-currency payments, decentralized exchange, and it's not even tapping into the real value here. I mean, like tokenization could ultimately spread into everything. We are seeing DeFi and tokenization being touted as some of the most innovative you know, solutions within crypto. Over here, we do see DeFi's real estate revolution, the rise of tokenization. The tokenization of property in DeFi differs greatly from the securitization that led to the global financial crisis. In this in, uh, introductory part of the special series of six articles, Forecast looks at the origins of the phenomena, uh, what's new about it, and the promise that it holds for investors. This is a big value proposition here. I really do think and I believe that going forward, innovations like DeFi, tokenization, and you know, streamlining of payments 
is going to add multiples of trillions of dollars in market cap to this market. Being ahead of the curve like Ripple is, is huge. And it's a monumental opportunity for them because think about it. If you are early to this game and if you have enough backing, Ripple does have a ton of backing behind it. Uh, Rosie Rios is even talking about how this could be so big. This could be one of the biggest things uh, in crypto. And I've been talking about uh, tokenization in real estate for so long ever since I read about it with Hedera. Uh, Hedera is doing some pretty big things within this industry as well. But I do think that Ripple could gain momentum within the space and very fast as well because of the efficiencies behind the XRP ledger as well as what they are actually already targeting. What do you see over here? Asset tokenization software market may see a big move. I do think that we will see a huge opportunity here. I think that honestly within the next couple years, I'd argue three to five years, we're going to see tokenization become a vital opportunity within crypto. I think that very similar to how we see the metaverse and you know things like that, I think that tokenization is going to be a big, big buzzword. I think that a lot of people are going to be talking about tokenization. I think everyone will be telling everyone about tokenization just because of the opportunity cost behind it. You really got to understand just how innovative this area actually is. And not to mention that tokenization just isn't around real estate. Tokenization is around everything. I, I, I've, I've said it time and time again on this channel that anything that has a value tied to it, you will be able to tokenize. HSBC, massive bank, set to launch Orion, blockchain bond tokenization platform. Tokenization, and this goes back to November 4th, by the way, so very new um, article. You are seeing a lot of tokenization being discussed, and it's a, a lot of it's launching in, um, in 2023. And, you know, this is just $400 million worth of bonds, but think about it like this. Think about how large this could get if every single, uh, every single major uh, bank and financial institution is utilizing tokenization from specific ledger technology. I mean, Hedera is expanding, uh, the XRP ledger is expanding, all of these major DLTs, the efficient ones at least, are all expanding rapidly. I want you all to realize the intricate value derived from tokenization and how large this could be for just the retail sector alone. Now, obviously, I do believe that we need regulations. I think that we need clean cut regulations, um, but I don't think that we need regulations the way that these you know, major elites are trying to discuss them. Um, at the end of the day, they're, they're trying to secure this market. They're trying to take control of this market um, in a way that is not going to be inefficient or uh, efficient for these major projects. It's actually going to be inefficient uh, for these projects, especially in terms of the growth aspect. So what we really need to do is shine a light on the fact that like this is all a corruption case. The SEC is at the heart of it too. I mean, like, listen, Sam Bankman fried was meeting with the Federal Reserve, the SEC head. I mean, it's ridiculous. But we need clean cut regulations because regulations are going to allow use cases like this to blossom into reality. And, you know, people that you know, uh, that don't even understand crypto, that don't even know about crypto, they're going to be utilizing crypto without even knowing it. They're going to go buy a house and they're going to be signing something digitally. And all of a sudden, boom, th their house that they just bought is tokenized. Everything that you are going to be doing on a daily span that is moving value or anything that's deriving value, tokenized. I mean, this is an absolute massive opportunity. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.